started. Um, hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us in this strange virtual world that we are living. I'm Lori Cohen, one of the six school counselors, and I have three other counselors who have joined us tonight. Um, Dr. Trandor. Hi, everyone. Um, Mrs. Martin. Hello. And Mrs. Vargas. Hi. So it's it's the girl the, the girl counselors tonight. <laughs> Mr. Bryant and Mr. DePiro have young children, so they're probably wrangling bedtimes and bathtubs and all that good stuff. Um, we're going to go over some stuff that you guys as parents need to know for college application night. Last Wednesday, we invited all of your students to a session with us in small groups, and we gave this basic presentation to them as well. So they should have this information. Uh, if they don't, please have them reach out to their counselor and we can share the, if for some reason they couldn't attend, we can share the slide show the presentation that we used with them. So without any further ado, we're going to get started. Um, again, for people who are just joining us, we are um, not having the chat function available on Zoom, but we do have a question and answer session. We will do our best to answer them in current time. So if I say something that sounds, you have further questions on, type a quick question and I'll try to answer it right on the spot. All right. So let me get started here. All right, so the counseling department, as I mentioned, there are six of us. Here is the alphabetical breakdown. This has not changed from last year. So your counselor is with the same counselor as they have had for, from last year and some of us going back for four years. Tonight, we're gonna to go over some of the following topics. We're going to talk about what your kids should be doing and when. We're going to go through Naviance. They should be pretty familiar, but we want to go with, through that with you. Explain a little bit about the common application map and what FERPA means. We're gonna talk about the actual process and I'm gonna mention a little bit about financial aid and scholarships and invite you to another meeting on financial aid in the beginning of October. So what should your kids be doing as we speak? They need, oh, did you mute us? Yes, everybody is muted as they jump in, by the way. Um, your kids should be finding a system that works for them. Some kids put together an Excel spreadsheet and keep everything on there. Others get a folder for each college they're applying to. Others just have a notebook that they write down. Others use their parents for their organization. You know your kids. Um, you see how they handle their schoolwork. You see how they handle their bedrooms. So if they are not organized, it is okay to help them and, and assist them in this, in this process. We stress with kids that they need to focus on their grades and their attendance, that they're not done. Most colleges are asking for first semester grades. Some are asking for first marking period grades. So at the very least, they have one more semester of full, full power ahead. They should be attending virtual college representative visits. So college rep visits are um, visits to high schools in, a non-COVID world, they actually come into the building and meet with students one on face-to-face. -face. These representatives are usually the people who are looking at your child's application. It's a good way to talk to them, kind of get your name out there and so forth. Many colleges are doing them virtually um, and kids can sign up on them in Naviance. We sent an email to them earlier this week explaining how they do them. And I believe the first one started actually today. So hopefully they've gone on to Naviance and looked at the rep visits. Uh, we are adding them as colleges add. They are jumping, kids should be jumping on and signing up. And parents can see what rep visits are if they log on to Naviance and it's available on Naviance. Um, again, we would normally be encouraging you to visit campuses in person, but there are colleges have done a phenomenal job of putting information sessions and tours online. And they are still keeping track of who attends these. So I would recommend that you attend some of these information sessions, take a tour. It's not the same thing, but it's close. And it's definitely a good way for your kid to check out the college. Um, also, some colleges are doing information sessions in the evenings. So you can look for those as well. Uh, we do talk to your kids about cleaning up their social media. Um, obviously, some of the larger schools, University of Pittsburgh, Penn State, University of Maryland, are not having the time or the resources to check students' social media. However, smaller schools are going to be doing that. So you want to make sure your kids, even though they are private, 
you want to make sure that they understand that they are really not private. So um, make sure that there's nothing inappropriate that's not incriminating. Even if they think it's funny, that shouldn't be on there. Um, at this point, you should be finalizing your lists of colleges. Many most the majority of kids apply to between four and eight colleges. Um, some kids apply to one and they're happy with that. They know they're going to get in, they get accepted, they're done. Others have applied to 2025. Keep in mind, college applications are anywhere between 75 and $100. So you want to really make sure that you've narrowed the colleges down to schools that your kids are definitely interested in. The majority of schools that you're applying should be schools that are right in the middle of their range so that they stand a solid chance of getting accepted. And then they can um, do some reach schools and then they can do some safety schools, but the majority should be in that middle section of where kids can apply. Um, so somebody asked back to the college rep visits, how many students will be in the rep visits? I think we have it set to 10 to 15, and if we need to, we can expand that, but it will be a small group, and the ones I've seen have only had three or four, so it, it is a small group. If you are going to be using the SATs, and I'll talk about this a little bit later, you should be arranging to send them to colleges. For students who are taking the SAT with us tomorrow, remember it's at Cedarbrook, not at the high school. Go to Cedarbrook. Um, there will be given an opportunity tomorrow to write down four schools that they are applying that they can send their scores for free. When they go to send uh, colleges the SATs, if you wait till after the test, it costs $11 or $12. So you want to make sure if you know of four schools that your kid's applying and you want to send the scores, please remind them tonight to have them log to enter that information tomorrow. It'll save you $44 at something. All right. Um, Naviance requesting transcripts, letters of recommendation. You can track transcripts. Parents can have access. You can ask your kids for their log going or you can email your student's counselor and we can set you up with, a, um, you, you, with a, an account. So if a parent wants access to Naviance and your kids are unwilling to share, you can email us and we can get you on there. Uh, let's see. Okay, and if they are interested in playing athlete, being an athlete in college at division one, two or three level, they have to register with the NCAA at eligibilitycenter.org. If they're just going to be playing club or IM, they do not need to register with the NCAA. All right, so as we talked about the college rep visits, um, we asked them, we do close it after 24 hours, so we have time to send out emails. Uh, I think it's someone said 15 minutes before, students will get an email with a link that tells them how to, how to log on. There will always be a school counselor in the meeting with the student, so please be aware that, you know, we're putting that, that component in, in place with this one. Um, they should definitely, if they're missing a class, it's okay to miss a class, and we will notify the attendance office of students who attended, but they just want to double check with the teacher because if they're getting a test or having a major presentation, they have to have that conversation with the teacher to make sure they're okay with that. And have them make sure they are preparing questions for the rep, and they don't want to ask real basic questions that they can find online, such as how many students attend your school. But you know, ask questions that are specific to them. Like, I'm interested in this club. Can you tell me how active it is? Or what are the internship opportunities available? And as I said, they register on Naviance. It's real simple. They will see the name of the school that they like. They click on sign up and they're registered. So it's super easy for them to do. All right, so what should they be doing as they're applying to college? They need to review the application process and requirements for each school. Unfortunately, every school has slightly different expectations. So some need zero letters of recommendation. Some will accept up to three. Some only want one. Some will allow you to report your own SAT scores. Others will want you to send them directly from college board. So make sure you're aware, and that's where spreadsheets or notebooks can be real helpful to students and families. Um, we always joke with our kids and we say, be aware of deadlines. They're not what we call the Cheltenham deadline, where if they approach a teacher and they say, oh, I know this was due today, but I had a horrible migraine. It was my grandma's 80th birthday. My dog ate my homework. Teachers are often willing to work with them and give them an extension. 
colleges will not be giving extensions. So if the deadline is October 31st at midnight and they don't submit their application until 12.02, they're not going to be reviewed in the same way as students who met the deadline. Also something to be aware of, there are some colleges that are notorious for as the deadline approaches, the websites run slower and slower and slower. Um, Penn State is historic for this problem. So they typically have a November 30th deadline and right around 10.30 that night, sometimes it crashes, sometimes it doesn't work. So I know kids like to procrastinate and push things off to the last minute, but please encourage them to apply a good several hours before the actual deadline timeline. Lots of different ways to complete an application. Um, the co all applications at this point, I have not seen an in-person application in probably 10, 15 years, 10 years at this point, maybe eight years, um, are all online. So college websites are your first place to start. Enter the name of the college, .edu, and you'll find it. Click on apply and it'll tell you what applications they use. There's something called a common application. A common application is um, used by many, many of co the American colleges. And what you do is you complete the, your basic demographic information, your personal statement, your um, activities and so forth. They will then submit it to you one, you'll have to do it once, fill out the information once for the colleges, and then you can submit it to multiple colleges. You still have to pay for each college and you still do have to continue with the questions that colleges have. They often have different questions for Common App um, per college, but it's one, ac one application instead of multiple. Coalition is the same concept, except for there are fewer schools that use that. So we always say start with the common application and the college websites. All right, I'm just gonna take a pause because I didn't realize there were a bunch of questions here. Um, okay, so if you wanna see what your SAT scores are live, you could, what they are before sending them, you can do that and then um, send them, but it will cost you $11 per school. CHS, we're waiting for the official letter from College Board to announce semifinalists and commended, so stay tuned for that. Um, all recommendations go through Naviance, correct? I'm gonna talk about that one. So some, this is a great question that I do wanna address. Some colleges seem to not be considering SAT scores or they're going test optional. Just make sure that the colleges are not requiring SATs if you are going to be considered for merit money, which is money that they're gonna give you for grades or academics or SAT scores. So double check that if you're not going to send the SAT scores. But absolutely this year with COVID, um, we have a great article that we're gonna format and send out to you guys so you can access it about how colleges are less focused on SATs and more focused on COVID situations and reasons how COVID is affecting students. So. If your student doesn't do, do well typically on tests and you wanna wait and see what their scores are, absolutely you could wait, just realize you will be paying to send them to schools. All right. Um, and then if you select certain schools to receive but you don't do well, there is not a way to retract it once you send it. However, keep in mind if you did better on a previous test, if you were one of the lucky people who took it in January last year before we shut down um, and you do, don't do as well this time, they will only use your higher score. So if you've already taken it, there's no harm in sending it again. If you're thinking you're going to use them, otherwise you could wait and see your scores and then just pay the $11 per, per school. All right. um, okay, and then we're gonna talk about how to use Naviance to request transcripts and letters of recommendations. And yes, sending SAT scores to college is optional for every SAT test, not just tomorrow's. Yes, that is correct. It's not just for tomorrow's, it's all SATs. So there are several types of admissions options you need to be aware about. The first one is called rolling admissions. That's where colleges are considering applications throughout the entire academic cycle. So if you apply in September, typically you will hear within four to six weeks of a completed application, you could get a response back in October, or November, depending on when you apply. So um, you should be applying to schools rolling decisions as early as you possibly can in the fall. 
I always like to tell students they should have their applications done by October because October 31st, I think that's a really good early date still and gets a good deadline. Um, I can tell you having had two children of my own, one listened to me and one procrastinated and we had groundings and we had, you know, can't go out until they're done. So really parents, this is the time for you guys to get involved in this because oftentimes kids are so overwhelmed by this process and they're so overwhelmed with the idea that this is their last time with their friends and their schoolmates that this is an easy thing to push off. So parents, we are giving you permission. If your kids don't believe us, you can, we can let them know, but you have permission to get involved in the timing of this cycle. Um, there is regular decision. You have to, everybody has to apply by the set deadline. Usually it's an October date, November, December, some January and nobody is given any decisions until a certain date, and that's usually in March or April. So you do have deadline for that, so it's a little bit less pressure than the rolling admissions, but again, be aware to apply early on that one. So students will not be given any time during the school day to work on their applications, but you do have Wednesdays, asynchronous days, so you can always use that opportunity if you need it. Uh, we are not offering the ACT at Cheltenham, if students need to take SAT, so you can go on to College Board and register for the SATs and see who around us is doing them. I don't know of many schools that are doing them through December. Um, so unfortunately, it's going to you know, be tough to find something. I, I know some parents have driven as far away as Jersey or Delaware for kids to take the SATs, but that is an option because some of those schools are open. Um, if you are eligible for free and reduced lunch, you should reach out to your counselor and the SAT and ACT scores you test, you can take them for free. Um, all right, so next is early action. This is my favorite type of um, process. Early action, you apply by an early date, typically it's in October, you get an answer in December, but you don't have to commit to the school. You have until May 1st to make your decision. This is great because I'm telling you, the minute kids get that first acceptance, they just feel a weight lifted off of them. Even if they knew they were gonna get in, it's still a relief to know I'm going to college next year. So if an early action option is available, absolutely encourage kids to take that. Um, they should definitely plan to do that and sit on that and make sure that happens. Some schools, I know University of Maryland, only offers merit money to kids who apply via early action. So look for that as well. Some of our more selective schools are running what they're now calling restricted early action. It's kind of a hybrid between early action and early decision. You don't have to make a decision. Oops, sorry. You don't have to make a decision, but you can apply to an other school early action. And then finally, there's early decision. This is you apply by a date, usually in October, early November, and you'll receive a decision by some point in December, you can only apply to one school early decision. Your counselor, the family, and the student all have to sign an agreement that if the student is accepted, they will withdraw all other applications and commit and a deposit to the early decision school. So you wanna make sure um, that your child is absolutely certain that this is the school they want to attend. Um, obviously, they can't arrest you, they can't find you if you break this agreement, but they will share this with other schools. They will never let, accept your child again. So this is a pretty serious decision. Sometimes colleges are less competitive in the early decision round, so that can be an option also. Um, so you, that's a conversation you should definitely have with your counselor. All right, I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on ACT versus SAT because I've got a lot to cover, but that is, um, there is stuff on our website that we can that you can look at. And you can also talk to your counselor. Um, not one is not better than the other. A lot of people take both and just see what they think and so forth. How important is that taking subject SAT? I think most colleges are doing away with the subject tests, but I would check with the college at this point. All right, so what should the student be doing? I've emailed you guys twice now a release of records on a DocuSign option. Um, hopefully you saw that and were able to fill it out. Our secretary, Mrs. Gallagher, is in the process, but it's complicated. She has to download them and then save them and then 
fix it in Naviance. So it is taking, because we have so many returned to us, so thank you for that. But it is taking a few days. So we're hoping by next Monday, all of that will be entered into Naviance and you'll be able to see. We cannot send a transcript if a student doesn't have this on file. You only have to fill it out one time for the year. So if you haven't done it yet, please tonight go on and complete that and then it will be done. As long as your child is under 18, you need to sign off on it. If they are 18 or over 18, they can sign. You guys are responsible for application for college, you're paying the essay if you're sending a resume. Students are responsible, and I'm gonna talk about this in a minute, to match Naviance and the common application. Um, if you wanna send your scores officially to a college, you have to do through, so through College Board and ACT. Do keep in mind that some schools will accept the scores if you enter them on common application or on the application. So double check the college's requirements and see if they're requiring official SAT scores, then you have to send through College Board. If they are not requiring official, but they're allowing students to self-report, don't pay for those and just enter those yourself. You're gonna request letters of recommendation through Naviance and request transcripts. And I'm gonna show you how to do all of that. All right, let me answer a few of these. Okay, yep, parents can see rep visits when they are coming. Um, can you resend information to log on to Naviance? You actually could reach out to your counselor and they could set it up for you. They have to send an email. So shoot your counselor an, e an, um, an email and they can help you with that. What should I do if I have a really looped and I'm not looking to go to university and I'm looking to go to university, not community college, have a conversation with your counselor. We can work with you. We can help you on that. We can help guide you and help you find a school that, that fits for you. And again, parents can get access to Naviance through, um, through the counselor. And the release of records came from me. I emailed students and parents. If your email address is in PowerSchool, it's also in Naviance. You should have received it if you didn't reach out again to your counselor. All right, so Naviance, for those of you who don't know what it is, it's a web-based resource for um, students post high school career and college planning. So throughout the years, kids have done some career inventories. They've done some interest inventories on there. They've researched some colleges. So it's specific to our school. So any of the data that's in Naviance is only Cheltenham statistics. Um, and it goes back, I think it goes back eight years of statistics. So it's really good data because you'll see how kids from our area do attending schools. And this is where kids will now go on to request transcripts and their recommendations. So they will be using Naviance, Naviance on a regular basis. So students access it um, from the high school site. They click on high school students Naviance. Their use, login information is typically their usernames. So it would be like 21L Cohen. Their password, it used to be that we set it for them and then Naviance got much more secure in, security systems in place. So now students will have to reset it if they haven't done so already. If they are struggling, reach out to their counselor and we can help them reset it real easily. All right, one of the things that um, so many people like on Naviance is the scattergrams. Um, this is a tool that will show you how your student will do based on SATs and GPAs. So if you look here, this is our student. If you can kind of see this blue dot here, um, he is, above the lines for the GPA, and he is right below the line for the SAT scores. And all of the green boxes are kids who've been accepted. Purple would be waitlisted kids, and red are kids that were not accepted. So if I'm looking at this and my student is here, I would say he stands a pretty solid chance of being accepted at this school. His scores are a little lower, but his GPA is a lot higher. And this year especially, I think that's going to be a big factor for colleges. And this is available for you on Naviance. All right, so now it's time to look at how to compare your schools on Naviance. So click on colleges I'm applying to, have them enter the schools that they are interested in, and then click on compare me. And then, do I have a pointer showing here? Feel like I can somewhere. I don't see it, so we're not 
going to mess with this. Um, so you see my student here is named Joe Cheltenham. Oops, sorry. Joe Cheltenham has a 2.54 GPA and his highest SAT was a 980. Um, as you see, Montgomery County Community College, the average GPA is a 2.38, so I get a little green check next to the name. Average SAT is a 938, so I get a green check. So that's a pretty solid chance I'll be accepted. Obviously with Montgomery County, with open enrollment, everybody will be, ex be um, ex accepted. Temple, the average GPA is a 3.97. So you can see Joe's a little low. And his average SAT is a 1209. And his scores are 980. That's why he has these red X's. If you have all red X's here, reach out to your counselor, set up an appointment, and we can help you find some, some other schools. Please keep in mind, though, that this is only one tool. This does not take into account activities, um, the quality of classes that were taken. It doesn't take into account essays or letters of recommendation. This is strictly based on statistics. So please don't panic when you see this. It's a good tool, but it is only one tool at your disposal. So don't have the, the sun rise and set on this because it, it can fluctuate depending on other circumstances. And we will be making this presentation um, available online and I will also be putting up the PowerPoint to show, have this available to you if you don't wanna to listen to the whole um, um, presentation again, you can just look through the PowerPoint. All right, so if you have signed next week, if you have signed that release of records, you are, if you have not signed it, you're going to see this, your child when they log on to Naviance to request a transcript is going to say, your parent guardian must give you consent for, for you to request transcripts, contact your counseling office if you think this is a mistake. They are not able to request a transcript. If you have filled in that form, this is what it's going to look like. They're going to see a button that says request transcripts and they will be able to do so. So next week you'll be able to log on and make sure that your document has been recorded and um, received by the high school. Right. So Common Application, Common App and Naviance have a relationship together. They communicate with each other, but you guys have to give them permission to do so. If you haven't already matched the Common App with the Naviance, you're going to get this big red line here that says it looks like you are not currently, currently able to apply to Common App schools. Um, we, I will be sending again, I've, I think we've all sent it once, but I'll send it a second time, step-by-step -step directions for how they have to match the Common App. Um, and I will put that on our website as well. And I will copy you guys when I email it to you. So you have the two because your kids are going to tell you they don't know what you're talking about. But they have to do this in order to um, send a school, send a transcript to a common application school that they've applied. All right, so make sure they're doing this and this needs to be done before they can request transcripts. All right, so where do we add colleges and Naviance? You're going to click on colleges I'm applying to and this big red plus sign. You're going to do that. If you've applied for to Common App and you've matched your Common App, they should all transfer over here to start with. So enter your colleges in Common App, then match with Naviance and they will all appear. But if for some reason they don't appear or you uh, enter a college afterwards, click on this red button. It'll give you a, a list of schools to choose from and it will enter it here. Um, as you can see, it will, you'll uh, tell them whether you're applying regular decision, early decision, early action. Um, you will see whether you've made a transcript request because right now you've just added colleges in. You haven't requested the transcript yet. So this says no request. Over here, it shows submission type. You want to make sure that CA stands for common app, that this line is not through it. So this tells me that this student is applying to Temple but is not using the common application. If they are using the common application, they will have to go on and correct that by clicking edit. This tells me this question mark that the student hasn't told me yet how they are applying to Westchester. They will have to go to edit and fix that. This is pretty important that this be done 
because the way Naviance connects with Common Application is different than it connects with colleges who aren't using Common App. And if you tell me you're not using Common App, but you do, the college will not be able to retrieve your transcript. So you want to make sure that the submission type is correct here. We do ask students to apply to colleges before they are requesting transcripts, but we would like students to put colleges into their Naviance now, just don't request the transcript. And I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. All right, after they have applied to college, they are going to then go on and request the transcript. So they will go on and click on this button that says request transcript. They will select initial transcript because this is their first transcript. It's not the end of the year transcript. They will do a drop down menu and it will have the colleges listed above that you haven't sent one for. And then they will hit request and finish. Once they finish that, the counselor will receive a notice that they have then applied to the school. We will now know to log on to Naviance and do our part to send the transcripts. Any questions on that one? And again, as I told my students, and I'm sure all of the other counselors did, if you're nervous, um, if your kid is nervous about this, please make a Google Meet appointment with us. We can share screens and I can make sure they're doing it correctly. All right. Um, many times kids stop into our office with their computers, we do it. We can do the same thing on Google Meet. So definitely encourage them to do that. All right, teacher recommendations are also handled through Naviance. You wanna determine how many letters colleges will accept and Naviance will include that on there and tell them as will the college's website. I would ask the students to reach out to the teacher first. Just shoot them an email because many times they don't have the teacher anymore. They're often asking ninth grade or I'm sorry, 11th grade teachers that they don't have. So just shoot an email, you know, dear Ms. Hogan, would you be willing to write my letter of recommendation? She'll write back yes. Then you're going to go on to request via Naviance and I'll show you that in a minute. Students should not request letters of recommendation through Common App. So there's a section on Common App that says re recommenders, add recommenders. Do not do that, all right? Do not do that on Common App. Um, students should allow teachers to have a minimum of two weeks time to write letters because in addition to creating virtual lesson plans, turning their lesson plans into virtual, grading, meeting with students, now some of these teachers are writing up to 20 letters and teachers pour their heart and soul into these letters. So they really do spend a lot of time on them so please never say to a teacher, can you write me a letter of recommendation? By the way, it's due tomorrow, all right? Instead, give them plenty of leeway, give them notice, and always follow up with a thank you note, send a thank you note to them, and in the spring, let them know where you've been accepted. Teachers really look forward to hearing that. All right, so how to request letters of recommendations? In Naviance, again, you're going to go to colleges, apply to college, and click letters of recommendation. You're going to say, who would you like to write this recommendation? You're gonna do this drop down menu and all of our Cheltenham High School teachers are listed here. Select which college the request is for. You can either do select specific colleges or you can do all current and future colleges. I recommend all current and future unless there's just a college that only wants one letter, then you would just choose that for that teacher. Write a quick note, thanks for writing my letters, and hit submit. Then the teacher will get a notification that you've requested the letter. Teachers cannot send letters of recommendation if students don't put colleges into their Naviance account. They can write the letter, but there's nowhere to send them. So that's why you want to go back here in the next few days to colleges I'm applying to and add all of the colleges you're applying to. At that point, teachers can then send the letter of recommendation. All right. All right, counselor recommendation. Some colleges, in addition to teachers, want a counselor letter. You should never request a counselor letter through this process because it's handled differently. Instead, if a college needs a recommendation and you will see that on the college's website, let your, let your counselor know. If a college says they don't want them, 
they will not be um, read. So there's no use sending them and we can send transcripts much faster via Naviance without a recommendation because we don't have to write them. Um, if we have a college application, uh, count, uh, if you have a college application that requires a counselor recommendation, you need to complete a survey that's listed in Naviance in, under the About Me tab. There's seven questions. We are not looking for um, perfect grammar, punctuation, anything, just bullet points, just answer the question. All right. Um, let's see. If your GPA, I'm going to take a break for questions. If your GPA is lower than what the school expected, but your SAT, will they consider, they will always consider SAT scores. Um, so absolutely, it's worth giving um, an application. If your SATs are higher than your GPA, you can still certainly try and see what happens. Um, you want to email your student's um, counselor if you want an appointment. So feel free to reach out to your counselor if you need an appointment. And the question is, do you have to request the teacher to write a letter of recommendation for each school, or will they automatically do one for each school in Naviance? Good question. Um, back here, it depends on which request you put down. If you put down all current and future colleges, they will send them to all schools. If you don't, then they will only be allowed to send to the schools you ask them for. All right. And finally, the question is, how do we handle letters of recommendation from people other than teachers? That's a great question. If you want to send maybe a coach that doesn't work for the district in the high school or an employer, um, you could then give that person the email address to the college and they can email the recommendation to the college itself. They cannot use Naviance. If you are having someone send a letter who's not in the in the district through Naviance, make sure they're including your student's full name, no, no nicknames, and their date of birth, just so they can get to the right application. All right. Um, the GPA is listed, and students' GPAs are listed in Naviance. You can't, unfortunately, see them in Power School, but you can see it in Naviance. All right. And then let's go on. So what's sent? So once a student requests a transcript, the following will be sent. And again, we ask for a two-week window. Oftentimes, we can do this much quicker, but we do ask for two weeks because in the height of the season, it, it does sometimes back up. We will send a copy of your transcript, which includes your senior year schedule. So they will see the classes your students are taking in senior year. We will send a copy of the school profile. Um, that's available on our website if you wish to see that. Um, that includes information about the high school. So it'll tell, it's sent to colleges that are not familiar, it's sent to all colleges, but it's useful for colleges who are not um, as familiar with Cheltenham High School. So it will include things such as um, how many AP classes we have, what average SAT scores are, which, um, uh, which honors classes we offer, which colleges kids have been accepted to, how many students are in the school. It's a useful tool for colleges to have. If the counselor letter is required, that goes along with the transcript. And then teachers send their letters through Naviance separate of the transcript and the counselor letter. Um, um, for the person who asked about handling grades in different classes and AP classes, I'm going to recommend that you speak to your counselor on that. I don't want to get into real specific conversations here. Um, Non-district people cannot use Naviance, so they will have to, as I said, email them directly to the college themselves. And can more than one different teacher recommendation be sent to different colleges? As long as the college is willing to accept them, yes, you can send multiple recommendations. Um, the question is, can you submit your transcript before submitting the Common App? And we absolutely request that you apply to schools before you request the transcript. However, if you start to run up into deadlines and you get concerned that you're not going to be able to give us the two week notice, please talk to your counselor. Do not wait till the day before it's due and then add it, but rather have a conversation with your counselor so we can work with you and prepare that. All right, as I mentioned earlier, we will be sending um, mid-year grades are automatically sent to all common application schools. If your college requests first marking period grades, you're going to let your counselor know and we will mail those or email those. And then if colleges request mid-year grades and they are not a common app school, we will send them upon your request. But realize that all um, mid-year school grades are sent to common app schools. 
Oh, this is a great question. Thank you. Um, the question is, with the FERPA for form release authorization, could you explain why you'd select, I waive my rights to review recommendations versus I do not waive my rights? So when you are filling out, just to back up, to match the Common App with Naviance, one of the things Common App asks is you to um, answer this, whether you, you want to waive your rights to see your letters of recommendation. And I want to explain to you what that means. So if you waive your rights to your recommendations, to your teacher recommendations, you will never be able to see a letter that I wrote on your behalf. And you will never be able to see the letter that Ms. Hogan wrote on your behalf. If you do not waive your rights, there are certain conditions that legally you will be able to request those letters. However, the, the circumstances that you will have access to those letters are twofold. One, you need to be accepted to the college and two, you need to be attending the college. So my feeling is at that point, you're not going to care what Mrs. Cohen said about you because obviously she wrote a, a great letter of recommendation. Um, we recommend that you waive your rights to see teachers if they are not comfortable writing a positive letter of recommendation will let you know in some format that they won't be writing you a letter whether they're too busy or they have too many or or they will just not be comfortable writing those letters they will not write one if they can't write a positive letter so you will know that um, and colleges will often be suspicious if you do not waive your rights they're going to wonder what you're worried about so that is a personal decision to weigh and to think about but our recommendation is that you waive your rights all right more and more schools are moving to what's called self-reporting and it's a pain in the neck because students have to enter every grade that they have earned from ninth grade 10th grade and 11th grade the number of credits and so forth the benefit of this to colleges is they have a lot less data importing that they need to do since basically your child is doing it for them. So therefore they can give you a decision much faster. Um, so that's, those are schools such as Pittsburgh, Penn State, Rutgers. Um, I think Maryland has jumped on that bandwagon. Um, we will be giving you an, a copy of your transcript, an unofficial copy of your transcript so that you have them. We are hoping, and I don't know the status of this, um, that we will have them available for you tomorrow after your SATs, but they will definitely be available for you on the textbook pickup day when you're coming to the school to get them. So we will be giving you that transcript. It will be an unofficial transcript so you can use it to report your um, grades. At the same time, we want you to double check the transcript. Make sure that the address is correct, your date of birth is correct, that the classes you took and the grades are there and are correct. So make sure you're checking that and looking at that at the same time. Um, as for the self-reporting, many of the schools, as I said, are also allowing families to self-report SAT scores. So do not spend the money to send an SAT score if they will allow you to report it on your own. Um, and kids will say, well, how, can I just put down that I had all A's on my transcript? Um, and you could do that, but if you get accepted and decide to attend, the colleges will then be verifying the transcript. And if you were, did falsify the information, it's going to cause you to be unaccepted to the school. So we encourage honesty, obviously. Um, so when we, you are using the scattergrams and the compare me's on Naviance, we are using the weighted GPA on this, on, in Naviance. So those categories are based on weighted GPAs. All right, scholarships, so where can I find them? First of all, most scholarships are school specific. Um, so you go on and you Google University of Pittsburgh scholarships, you're going to find them. You go on and Google um, Johns Hopkins scholarship, you're going to find them. Um, Naviance has lists of scholarships as does certain websites, FastWeb, and I should have added because I also like their search, College Board has a scholarship site. Um, please keep in mind that they, if there is a scholarship that there's only one winner nationwide and it's for a large amount of money and there are three essays, it may not be in your students' best use of time to be filling those out. Oftentimes, there are scholarships are more accessible, um, more local 
um, affiliation. So maybe VFWs or the employees that you work in might be able to help you with some scholarships. If you want to send a transcript to a scholarship, because many of them will require, please email your counselor and provide us the scholarship address and we will send it via email or mailing it, whichever they need. All right, let me answer a few questions. Are the first transcripts that are sent out include senior year grades? So the transcripts that we will be sending out this fall will include ninth, 10th, and 11th grade grades and a list of your 12th grade classes. So the GPA is only going to be current from the end of June. <coughs> Excuse me. We calculate GPA at the end of each year. So the GPA that you have now is the GPA that is being sent to colleges. Um, how are recommended recommendations handled for schools that only take coalition app? Same as they would be with um, a school that you're just applying through the website. You would just request it in Naviance and it will be sent electronically to the schools. Should we try to do interviews with schools? If schools are offering interviews, absolutely. Schedule the interviews. Um, that's a good idea. I, do, I haven't heard much of whether they're going to be doing them or not. My guess is they would all be virtual at this point, but absolutely, if a school offers an interview, it's always a good idea to do that. Basic recommendation, if it's, if it's a recommended or optional, we always say it's, it's required. Anything optional, do. It'll just push your student and make them stand out that much more. Um, does CHS report both weighted and unweighted GPAs to schools? Yes, we do. On our transcript, it includes both the weighted GPA and the unweighted GPA. It will also include the class rank that is based on the weighted GPA. Um, are we able to send this PowerPoint to us? It will be posted on the website tomorrow morning um, on the counseling website. I will email it over to them when we're finished tonight and they will post it. I don't know if they'll be able to post the presentation, but if they can, that'll be there as well. Do colleges look at all grades 9 through 12 to make their final determination? They definitely look at 9th through 11th. Um, if they see a positive trend, like maybe 9th grade was shaky, but then 10th, 11th got better, last year was great, did much better, they may say, we want to wait and make a decision and see how the student does first marking period and first semester. So yes, at that point, they would be looking at senior grades as well. Um, don't select the final transcript selection. That's just a feature on Naviance. So just always when you're requesting a transcript, request initial. What will be the, when will the score be available for tomorrow's SATs? I believe I saw online that they will be available October 15th. And how will CHS handle grades GPA for last spring's virtual school? So, the grades are, are not listed as pass-fail because remember that was only the fourth marking period. And so that was averaged into the GPA. And so the, G, the grades for 11th grade are regular letter grades, A, B, C, D, or F. All right. All right. We are hosting a virtual financial aid night. Um, it will be held October 8th at 6.30 via Zoom, just like we're, I think it's Zoom. Um, but I, we will get you information on that. It is hosted by a financial aid officer at Penn State Abington. She typically has been coming every year for us and doing the presentation. And she said she's very comfortable doing it in person. Or I'm sorry, not in person, doing it via Zoom. So we will be doing that October 8th. And I will be sending out information next week as, as it gets closer. Um, we typically do do a, a FAFSA completion night. And that's for families to come in to the building and work with a representative from Pennsylvania Higher Education Authority to help us with that. But because we can't be in the building, we are not able to offer that night. However, um, our representative did say if parents have individual questions, we can provide you her email address. So if you're struggling after financial aid night with the FAFSA, we can get you some help virtually. So the FAFSA is called the Federal Application or Free Application for Federal Student Aid. Um, that is available for families to fill out October 1st. And again, this date, October 8th, will go into much more details. Um, so you can get everything set up. It does take a little bit of time to do the FAFSA. They are going to be looking at your 2019 tax information. Yeah, prior, prior. Um, so that's the get information you're going to have to start gathering. You are also going to need a, um, a, a, a separate ID code. 
So you, you and your student each need a separate one. So you will both have to go to this site in order to get this ID code. And that ID code is basically your signature for the FAFSA. So that's, you can certainly set that up ahead of time. Um, a question is, do you recommend to wait to fill out the FAFSA until after that financial aid night? It's never a bad idea to wait. She gives you a ton of good information. If you've had multiple students go through this process and you're familiar with the FAFSA, you probably wouldn't need to wait for that night. But I find it's always useful. And because it's only eight days after the deadline, it may be worth waiting for that. Again, financial aid is really tied into um, deadlines and early bird gets the worm. So make sure you are abiding by deadlines and as early as you possibly can. You can apply for financial aid without hearing if you've been accepted to colleges. So you can do these two processes simultaneously starting October 1st. Um, a question was, how do you report AP exam scores to schools? Does this factor into admission decisions or only credit for college courses after admitted? So the school does not send AP scores. So that would be up to you guys to send the AP scores and colleges use them, do not use them for admissions decisions. Uh, they do use them only for credit after kids have been accepted college credits. Uh, and I'm assuming if you've taken them earlier, you're probably taking more AP exams this year. So after the AP exams um, in May, you can, you'll know where you're going to school and you can arrange to send the scores then. Now, having said that, if your student did really well on a large number of AP exams, never hurts to include that in a um, application. If they don't want to use the information, they won't, but you can always use that. Um, if we have done FAFSA for another student, do we use the same password? You as the parent use the same password. Your student needs his or her own um, ID number. All right, so second semester, what should we be doing? So you think coronavirus was bad, you should see a senioritis. Just kidding. Um, but senioritis is a real thing. Um, for some students, it starts way earlier than others. Some of you may be living it as we speak. Really fight it. Um, they, especially first semester, they have to try to get those grades up, keep the grades up. Um, if grades drop, by maybe a letter grade by the end of the year, it's not going to be a huge difference. We do send a final transcript to the college your student will be attending. So they will see if there's been a tremendous grade drop. And every year, a handful of students will get a letter from a college that says, we noticed your grades have dropped second semester. Please explain. Um, sometimes those things are tied into merit money. Other times it's tied into acceptance. So really do not let your kids tank second semester and stop attending and stop completing work. If you didn't apply via Common App and you had a good first semester, I would recommend that you request the mid-year grades to be sent. Um, hopefully after you've been accepted, you can visit schools. Hopefully in the spring, colleges are open so you can actually get there and see the schools. So we're ho hoping that's going to happen. Once your student decides where he or she wants to attend, you want to secure housing and send a deposit. You have until May 1st to make your final decision. Um, that is a national date. However, some colleges, <coughs> excuse me, some colleges tie into their housing placement the timing of your deposit. So if your student knows by January that he or she was accepted and is going to attend that school, don't wait until May to send the deposit. If you can, send the deposit early to secure some, some housing. All right, any other questions? Give it a few minutes to type. Um, a lot of information here tonight. Again, your kids have heard this. I will put out a plea once again, please use us. If you wanna make an appointment with us and sit down with you, uh, your kids, we'd be glad to do that via Google Meet. Um, I personally have been through this twice. One was a little bit easier than the other. The other one thought he could do it all on his own and could handle deadlines. And it kind of, you know, it was a little messy. So I had to step in as his mother, not as a counselor, because I believe I was told at one point, what do you know, mom? And I said, well, this has been my career. However, um, you know, we, we, we survived. 
Um, I've survived two of them. We have people on this call who have survived two of them. Dr. Trandor and Ms. Martin are going through it. I'm hoping they're gonna survive themselves this year. I'm pretty sure they have uh, in my 23 years as a counselor, I have 24 years, I haven't lost a parent yet. But seriously, if your students are struggling, if they're resistant, if they are not interested in listening to you or getting help, and I will be very honest with you, I had my son's guidance counselor, school counselor on speed dial, and I would call her and say, Taryn, don't tell him I'm calling, but can you call him down and ask this? So don't ever be afraid of doing that with us because I also have done that. Um, email us, email your student's counselor, and we can schedule a meeting. We'd be glad to help you. Um, it's a little more daunting to kids that they can't just pop into our offices to ask a quick question, but really encourage them to reach out to us. We are making ourselves available, especially to seniors at this time of year. So um, that's how you would schedule a meeting with the counselor is reach, email them and we'll schedule something. So deep breaths. Deep breaths, it's going to get ugly before it gets better, parents. I can promise you that. But kids will land where they're supposed to. And if we can help in that process, it would